What's up, this is Altaric here. So Zwift on Apple TV is one of the most efficient, affordable, and streamlined setups you can get. It's a budget-friendly device, super easy to set up and use, and it is versatile. It is not just for Zwift either. You can also run other apps like MyWoosh, Training Peaks Virtual, Full Gas, Ruby, and more. But now let's talk about the new Mac mini with the M4 processor. It is the most affordable Mac in their lineup and it starts at $599 US dollars and Apple has packed a lot of power into this small tiny device. It is the most powerful mini PC at this price level on the market and it runs Zwift like an absolute dream. So between these two devices, you've got a choice between $130 Apple TV or a $500 or $599 Mac mini and both can run Zwift but they come with some stark differences. So let's break it down. Okay, let's start with the setup process. Apple TV is incredibly straightforward. All you need is a TV and an HDMI cable. And if you do not already have an iTunes account, you will need to create an iTunes account. And uh, that's it, you are ready to go. You can control everything with the included Apple TV remote. Now I know some people love this remote and others, not so much. But the point is, you do not need any additional devices like a keyboard or a mouse. It's all handled with the remote. On the other hand, the Mac mini setup is a bit more involved. You'll need a keyboard and a mouse. And personally, I use the Keychron wireless keyboard and I think this is the K3QMK model or something close like that. And the Keychron wireless mouse. And I'll leave links in the description in case you are interested in checking them out. You will also need an HDMI to HDMI cable or a Thunderbolt to HDMI cable. And depending on your monitor uh, setup. But the Mac mini can support connecting up to three displays. So that means you can multitask by running Zwift on one monitor and maybe a YouTube video or a Netflix or any other app on the second screen. Apple TV, on the other hand, is limited to a single display and multitasking options like picture in picture are very, very limited. So as you can see, the Apple TV setup is much simpler and way more cost effective is practically plug and play. With the Mac mini, you are paying for more power and flexibility, but that comes with additional setup steps and hardware requirements. And once your device is set up, the next step is to download the Zwift app on the Apple TV 4K is as simple as installing any app, just like you do on your phone. So you head over to the App Store, search for Zwift and hit install and you are done. For the Mac Mini, the process is a little bit different. You'll need to visit the Zwift website, download the app version that is compatible with your device and run the installation file. It's straightforward, but not quite as seamless as the Apple TV process. But one clear advantage of the Apple TV is that the app updates happen automatically in the background as long as you have that turned on in the settings. On the Mac or even Windows, updates are triggered when you launch the Zwift app, which can take a bit of time, especially if there is a major update. The other cool thing about the Apple TV is how fast the app starts. It literally just takes a few seconds to launch Zwift, pair your devices and start writing. With a Mac or a PC even, it's usually a bit slower. Zwift takes a little longer to open and get you going. But beyond that, there are plenty of limitations that you'll experience with the Apple TV and it begins with the pairing screen. The biggest drawback of using Apple TV with Zwift is that limited number of Bluetooth connections Apple TV allow you to pair only two devices in the Zwift app. So for example, if you pair your trainer as power source and a trainer and then pair a separate cadence sensor, you won't have any Bluetooth loss left for a heart rate or monitor or a steering device. And to get around this, you'll need to use a Zwift companion app on your phone to connect additional sensors. But that said, this limitation is becoming less of an issue with modern trainers. Many trainers now broadcast multiple metrics like power, cadence, and heart rate through a single Bluetooth connection. So for example, trainers like Jet Black Volt can transmit power, cadence and heart rate all through one Bluetooth connection. And some trainers now support even Wi-Fi connections like Wahoo Trainers and the Jet Black Bolt. So essentially you are bypassing Bluetooth altogether and pairing everything via Wi-Fi. On the Mac Mini, you do not have these Bluetooth restrictions. Even though there is technically a limit to how many Bluetooth devices you can connect at the same time, it's high enough that you're unlikely to hit it. 
Plus, the Mac Mini offers uh, even more flexibility with AM Plus compatibility. So just uh, connect an AM Plus uh, USB-C key and uh, you can connect to as many AM Plus devices as you want. One of the nice things about the Apple TV is that you can control everything using the Apple TV remote. It's compact, straightforward, and works right out of the box. However, navigating with the remote can sometimes feel a bit clunky. It might take a few extra swipes to get you to where you want to go, and it can take some time to get you used to the swipes and click functionality. Eventually, you'll get the hang of it, but it's definitely uh, limited compared to other options. On the Mac Mini, navigation is much more intuitive and flexible. You can use a mouse and to navigate um, Zwift just like you would with any other app. And the Mac version of Zwift also supports keyboard shortcuts, uh, which makes accessing certain features like, uh, like for example, uh, hiding the head-up display. You can press the H key for that or open the pairing screen with the A key. Using a mouse, you can even click on a nearby rider list to follow another rider. And once out that feature on the Mac is the ability to change camera views using the number keys on your keyboard. And this includes my favorite, which is a drone view, which can be controlled using the arrow keys and the plus and minus key. And the drone view is perfect for creating those smooth cinematic shots during your rides. And it's something you simply do not get on Apple TV. And if you're using the Apple TV, you're gonna rely much more on the Zwift Companion app to perform a lot of these functions like messaging, uh, giving ride-ons, ride uh, or interacting with other riders. You can also swipe up on the Apple TV remote to bring up that task menu, but it's not as versatile or efficient as using a mouse and keyboard on the Mac Mini. Okay, let's talk about how Zwift performs in the Apple TV versus the Mac Mini, and we're gonna focus on picture quality. There are three main factors that determine how Zwift looks when you are riding. The graphic profile, the graphic resolution, and the frame rate. First, there's that graphic profile piece. This is automatically assigned by Zwift based on your device graphic processing power, and it is determined or it's, it determines the level of details and realism you'll see in the game. The graphic profile controls things like shadows, sun rays, water reflections, wildlife, and other immersive elements that you see on the game. And unfortunately, you cannot change this settings. It is locked to your device and assigned by Zwift. The next thing is the graphic resolution, which refers to the number of pixels on the screen. The more pixels, the sharper and better the image. Unlike graphic profiles, Zwift does let you choose the resolution you want in the settings menu with options to up to 4K for devices that can support 4K. And finally, there's that frame rate, which is determined by your device, uh, graphic power, and Zwift. Frame rate affects how smooth the game looks and feels. The higher frame rate generally creates a more immersive experience and smoother experience. On the Mac Mini M4, Zwift supports the maximum resolution of 4K, which is as good as you will get in Zwift. And Zwift also assigned the Mac Mini M4 a high graphic profile, meaning you will see richer details like rider shadows, trees, water reflections, and even wildlife on your rides. On the Apple TV, things are a bit more on the basic side. You'll get a basic profile with a maximum resolution of 1080p and you cannot change the resolution on Apple TV. So even though 1080p is decent, it's not on the same level as 4K and the basic profile means you will be missing on some of the finer details. So for example, if we pause the video here and take a closer look, you'll notice that on the Apple TV, there are no trees or bushes on the side of the road and those orange flowers that appear on the Mac Mini are completely missing on Apple TV. Even rider shadows are missing on Apple TV, which adds depth and realism to the game. They're not available on Apple TV. So the difference in frame rate is also significant. The Apple TV is capped at 30 frames per second, which is okay for a functional and enjoyable drifting experience, but not ideal for the, the ultimate smoothness. On the Mac Mini M4, I'm getting over 100 frames per second in ultra resolution and about 80 frames per second in 4K. So Zwift performs best at 60 frames per second or higher. That will give you a smooth, immersive riding experience. Even though most casual riders will find that 30 frames per second at 1080p perfectly fine for riding, the Mac Mini's ability to deliver that higher frame rate and resolutions create a much richer more detailed 
riding experience that you will appreciate if you see the two side by side. Trust me. So if you're looking for a dedicated device for Zwift, it is hard to be the Apple TV. It is affordable, super, super easy to set up, quick to get started, and everything is controlled with one simple remote. So it is the perfect plug and play option. However, if you are someone who values performance, better graphics, and multitasking, and you do not mind spending that extra money, the Mac Mini M4 is the way to go. It is hand down the best mini PC on the market for Zwifting. Now, I would love to hear from you. Have you used both the Apple TV and a PC for Zwift? Did you make the switch from one to the other? What's been your experience? Let me know in the comments below. So there you have it, folks, Mac Mini versus Apple TV. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you found it useful, do not forget to support the channel by hitting that like button. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, you know what to do. Thank you for watching and uh, happy Zwifting.